think we got this. Here we go. This is good. Hello. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hello. 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 I am Alexander Sharp, the director of Wired Shut. And I am Peter Malone Elliott, the writer of Wired Shut. And Wired Shut is the movie that we did together that is coming to digital and video on demand on November 30th. Hey, Dad. I don't know why you seem so surprised. Mom tried calling you. You know, I really think you need to eat something. Everything going to plan? We don't hurt him. Where is he? My daddy. You're empty or safe. I'm not gonna let you ruin this plan. You'll thank me later. And this interview is brought to you by Pipeline Artists. Yeah. Welcome to the first episode of the Alex and Peter show. I was going to say turtles and bourbon, but that's fine. Yeah. Al- you know what? Alex, what are you drinking there? Uh, I'm having a, a, uh, Kentucky bourbon. Um, yep. uh, it's Basil Hayden. Yeah. Which of course is one of your favorites. I'm drinking it from a, Glen Karen glass. Yep. Uh, Glen Karen Scotch glass, just to aggravate the experts. <laughs> Mine is just like it's it's a it's a very pretty glass, but it's not for tasting. It's for looking. You know. It look. kind of looks like the wired shut glass. It looks like you could have a spider in there. That's a perfect segue into. <laughs> No, That's a perfect segue into uh, what this is about. Yeah. Uh, we are going to be asking each other questions that we came up with ourselves, which... We'll see how it goes. Cheers. Cheers. Clink. Clink. Good sound effect. Thank you. That's why they pay me the big bucks. Mm. Mm. This whole thing kind of started... Yeah. Uh, our first feature film, it started with a text message. I don't know if you remember, but we were on our way out of Washington Mm -hmm. from the Gig Harbor Film Festival in 2018. Yes. And it was September and I got a text message driving back on the highway and I was actually driving through a storm. (laughs) And I got a text and um, it said, it said wired shut, uh, novelist washed up, home invasion the log line you know it was better than that it was just and, it was just a scattering of words <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah, it was just words yeah 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 then we started shooting in march of 2019 correct so, so ju- just about three years yeah just about three years yeah. i i'm i'm very proud of the movie obviously but i just i think about like how much both of us have grown as people and artists in that three years. I just, I, I wonder what would happen. I wonder what Wired Shut would look like if we did it now. I don't know, would it be the same? Would it be different? I don't know, food for thought. Yeah, 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 that's a good question. That's always a fun game to play. Yeah, <laughs> philosophical food for thought. Could we have done yeah. better? We're all right, we're, we're what? Uh, two minutes into this and already getting really philosophical? Great. So what was the most uh, challenging aspect for you about shooting a feature film for the first time? Or alternatively, what was the thing that surprised you the most? 
Um, I'm eternally grateful for the opportunity that we got to yeah. do Wired Shut and, and the fact that we have now made a feature film. Um, yeah. And I do want to do it again. Yeah. I've kind of got that itch now. I'm kind of like, I'm ready to go again. But man, oh man, I think when, when, I, when we finished, I was like, I don't even want to talk about it. I don't want to <laughs> talk about movies. I don't want to look at a camera for months. And I think I took a little hiatus before actually putting yeah. the assembly cut together. I think I took a couple months. I was like, I just need to. Yeah. I mean, part of the reason it was so bloody difficult was because we shot over uh, two weeks completely nocturnally. Yes. And, and we had kind of, once we found the location, we were like, well, the, it's a house, it's mostly interiors, you know, do we garbage bag the, the, all the windows and skylights? And then we looked at the house and it's like 95% glass. It's all glass. Well, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> or we're gonna rack up a thousand dollar bill at Home Depot. So um, uh, we, yeah, so shoot it, like call time from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Yep. That was brutal. That yeah. was brutal. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and then the other thing I would say, um, I don't know that it was, I don't know that anything was really surprising in terms of like um, a huge revelation for me because I had done so many shorts and I approached this the exact same way, just yeah. an extended short. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but what I would say is with that amount of, uh, length to the story I thought that you know it was pretty it was pretty disorienting not shooting perfectly in chrono uh, in chronological order you know we, we we shot um I think like the middle of the script day one yep and then we shot the final scene of the script on day two <laughs> that's true we did <laughs> and then we went back again and it was a bunch of, and you know, it, it, because you had to, we had to block it for which area, we had to kind of block shoot everything, which was the most efficient. You know, if we're in the living room, we do everything in the living room. Right. If we're in the stair, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, um, that's what I would say. Exhausting, disorienting, uh, 100% would we'll do it again. Yeah. So follow-up question to that. So you said that uh, the short films you did, you shot chronologically. We did a short film together, Ziggy's Will. I don't remember a shooting chronologically, did we? Is that true? We did. We huh. did. We, we, uh, and we got lucky. Um, if, look, if we can shoot chronologically, that is the dream. That's, that's just wonderful. It's honestly a luxurious experience because um, you don't need to then think about, right, he broke up with her here and so now he's sad but we actually shot that yesterday and now we're doing them in love. So how does that look? You know what I mean? So it's like, you gotta get into a whole new headspace and reset. Right. Um, but uh, no, we, we uh, uh, well, your script was really good for that because it was, we did three days of shooting. We did one day in the, uh, you know, deputy's office. We did one day in the uh, holding cell. Yeah. And then we did the final day uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. exterior out in the valley. So it was like, and that's how the short plays. Yeah. So. yeah, true, true. Okay, fair enough. And then with Wired Shut, I just wrote a movie that's all at night. And I just said, fuck you to that. <laughs> Great. Great. <laughs> My next question for you, Peter. Yes. <clears throat> Do you remember the experience of shooting the movie or have you eternally redacted it from memory have i scrubbed it from my brain yeah uh, yeah of course i do yeah i the it was a really it was incredibly stressful and tiring like you said um those night shoots were really hard but it was one of the most fulfilling creative things i've ever done i mean it was you know it was incredibly rewarding to see such talented people working on something that i was just typing on a page you know um and it really did give me a much needed comprehensive look at all aspects of filmmaking and producing and, and whatnot. And, you know, I mean, I did a little bit of acting, so I'd been on sets, but I had never been on a set where I was the writer producer. And, you know, I had, you know, responsibilities other than just being an idiot in front of the camera. And it was, 
it was incredible. It was great. So yeah, I, I remember it very well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Didn't lose any sleep. Oh, I lost lots of sleep, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I lost lots of sleep. I we do it for the art. We do it for the art, baby. We, we suffer for the art. I, I had bags under my eyes for, you know, months, you know, but it was I, I, eat, I don't know about you, but I ate cereal for dinner, technically. <laughs> well, in my mind, I thought if, listen, if I'm going to go to bed at uh, 6 a.m. after a full yeah. day of shooting, that's still technically the morning. So why, why do my t choice of meals have to change? I may as well keep. So I would have, I mean, I didn't have a steak in the morning, but you know, <laughs> or I didn't have a steak when I woke up. Can you imagine if I had a ribeye when I woke okay, up? And cereal when I got home? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It, it was, it was weird because like, like you said, we shot from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. most days or, you know, nights, I guess. It was weird having lunch at like, you know, midnight or 1, 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. Yeah. That was, yeah. that was weird. <laughs> yeah. Like, well, that's, that, that's what everyone says too. Cause it's like it, everyone it's called lunch. Right. It's just like, no matter the time of day, it's like, yeah. man, that's lunch. All right. 30 minutes, everyone. Yep. And it's like, you know, like I should be in bed right now. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> I'll kind of, my next question actually dovetails off that. And this is my pantomiming for dovetailing. We didn't even plan. No, we didn't. We didn't. What was your favorite memory of being on set with me? And why was it us speaking to each other like David Lynch? <laughs> tidbit, love you. Tidbit, love you. Love you, Tidbit. Love you. <laughs> favorite memory of you. The question was favorite memory of you. Sorry, I got sidetracked by our David Lynch. Yes. Uh, um, for the listeners watching we had an, a running inside joke where we talked to each other like david lynch and it's not funny to anyone except for us but we really no. do it and in you fact know, it confuses yeah. people yeah, yeah. But we had full I, I mean this is a good, a good time to talk about this we had full conversations on set in that voice i think people got that's right us. <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. we did we did we would just be kind of running Probably just right. random quotes by him <laughs> And yours didn't connect to mine. It wasn't like it was a conversation. It's no, like no, you were no. both individually and separately insane. You're both monologuing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but seriously, what, what was your favorite memory of being on set with me or in general? Of uh, being on set with you, I... Honestly, my favorite memory, and this is going to be controversial. Oh. And I, and I, and I, I love this. Okay. We had probably, w wouldn't you agree, the most stressful final <laughs> hour of shooting on the movie. And yeah. we, now, disclaimer, yeah. we, can't, we can't talk too much about it because one of the things we did shoot chronologically, relatively speaking, is the- Climax. Climax. Yeah. And um, we shot that last. Um, that was the last- that thing we shot and it was i don't know 5 30 a.m yeah on yeah. the <laughs> second friday and we had gone through two weeks of already you know seriously crippling our you know sleep schedule and I was just thinking about it <laughs> i you and i i think we're just just needed it to work and we I you know it was all I remember was and I and I love us I love us so much for it all I remember was is we were trying to get this thing to work which was very very difficult because it was all practical yeah yeah, yeah. and it was the big moment of the movie and um it wasn't working and we did I don't know seven to ten takes of it trying to get the thing to work and I remember I, I was on the inside absolutely freaking out. Mm -hmm. But on the outside, I, I, I couldn't, you know, I, I, you got to go up to the actor and go, all right, well, Very maybe calm. try it this way. Try, yeah, yeah, well, okay, that's clearly not working. So maybe just, okay. Um, and, and, and there Peter is by the monitor. And you, you, I remember seeing you glimpses of you, but I didn't even want to look at you. Yeah. Like, so <laughs> look at and you were, you know, checking your watch and, and uh, are we going to hit over time and, and tapping your foot and finger kind of, you know, and looking at the monitor and it, it, and I remember, I remember we snapped at each other 
and you said, True. And yeah. you, you said, Alex, we got to go. And I said, I know, but it has to work. <laughs> <laughs> and that, but that was as bad as it got like that. That was, that was, it. That was it. That <laughs> was as bad as it got. It, and um, then we, we literally, we, not to cut you off, but literally we, it worked. Spoiler, it worked. Yeah. And literally, I think we had like, I, I can't remember exactly, but we had like literally like two minutes left in the clock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I genuinely felt like uh, Ethan Hunt, Luther, and Benji trying to disarm a ticking time bomb at the end of like we got it, that. yelled, cut, rap, you know, whatever. And literally, the, we were in a garage with the door closed, and we saw the sun rising. It was like, oh, we did it. <laughs> and and that and that was the most cathartic thing because yeah. it was the high stakes of it. We got it, cut. You know. Uh, and yeah, the garage door opened, 6 a.m. golden sunlight came yeah. through. Yep. That's a wrap on Wired Shot. Everyone clapped. I remember breaking down. Oh, I yeah. I, cried. You. I, cried. I was, I cried. I couldn't help it. I just hugged my sister. I hugged you. Yep. I hugged Martin. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 That yeah. was the most memorable thing is the kind of crossing the tape on the whole thing. But the moments leading up to crossing the tape were insanely stressful yes yes yeah. well, it was similar a similar adrenaline rush and relief release i guess to feel like you said crossing the tape running a long marathon and finally getting to the end and you just your body wants to explode but you did it you did and that for yeah. you yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 okay all right yeah. your favorite memory is us snapping each other being stressed <laughs> I say that with love, I promise. I say it with love. Yeah. I say it with love. <laughs> tidbit, love you. Love you, tidbit. All right, so my next question for you is a three-parter. Oh, boy. Um, okay. <laughs> and it kind of dovetails off of what your last question was. So this is good. This is working out for us, I think. Yeah, you, that's right there. The thing David Lynch does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every Friday. It's uh, if you can <laughs> believe it. <laughs> okay i'm sorry go ahead okay um what did you enjoy the most about shooting okay what did you enjoy the least about shooting okay and what surprised you in watching the story come to life on yeah. the monitor by work of a dozen people versus you as a writer at a desk right Okay. Within so, your head in its own right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alone. Okay. So what so what I liked most about the experience, what I liked least, and what was it like seeing it unfold in front of me on the monitor? Those are the yeah. things. And and if anything surprised you. If anything surprised me. Um well the the thing, I mean, there was so many things that I loved about it. I mean, it, like I said, for all the stress and all the whatnot, it, it was an incredibly cathartic, rewarding experience. But if, if I had to choose one thing, it would probably be, hmm. I'll say two things, two things. I'll do a two pronged answer to this question. Hey man, what? it's your answer. Hey man, <laughs> hey. Um, firstly, seeing it's, it's one of those movies and scripts that, you know, the, it really, a lot of it hinges on how the actors do it. And that's true of any movie to an extent, but this in particular, if we didn't have, because of the time constraints and the budget constraints and whatnot that we had, if we didn't have three actors that were ready to go and just ready to rock and roll immediately out of the gate, the movie was not going to work. Yeah. Um, and seeing three really, really amazing actors take the words that I tippy tapped on the keyboard and embody them so completely and fully and richly and better than I thought it ever could have been was incredibly, um, I keep saying cathartic, but it was cathartic. You know, I mean, I, I, had, I had done theater before and I had a play produced. So I've seen actors do my words. They're like that in and of itself wasn't a new thing, but seeing it in a feature film is you know i mean it's it's seeing it on the silver screen in the monitor it's it's different right you know it's different than a play um and i i i poured a lot of um, emotion and thought into the writing and seeing those three actors betash 
Natalie and Blake put clearly they thought about the characters so much and they put so they did they did their homework to the nth degree and seeing them care about it as much as I did was really really wonderful so that that yeah. that, that that's one and then two I'm about to compliment you so just don't look at me while I do this. oh god oh should I leave oh, should, just take a lap take a lap take a lap seeing someone execute it from a visual directorial standpoint in such a autorial excellent way was made me feel like I was in the presence of greatness and that I had the exact right partner by my side and I was so happy to be doing it with you and it is only you that could have done it the way it ended up being and I'm so happy about that and that was incredibly satisfying. So thank you. Thank you. I had no idea you liked it that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Uh, so, and then uh, what did I like least, right? That was, that was part B of your question. Yeah. Well, what did you enjoy the least? What um, what yeah. 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 Um, also my directing. <laughs> 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 why are they staring at each other for so long why is nobody talking why is nobody talking i don't understand um uh what the, honestly the the <laughs> the honestly the post-production process was the part i liked the least because i had very little control over it. i mean that was you and our you know wonderful post-production team doing it and I kind of you know I was offering like verbal support but there's not much I could do and obviously it turned out great I'm incredibly happy with what happened but that was that that was a bit of an anxiety inducing process for me and I, I learned a lot um, about you know how movies can live and die on post-production how important it is I mean I knew how important it was but this really made me appreciate it too you know a completely different level that I hadn't experienced before. Um, so, and then, you know, the night shoots were hard, but blah, blah, blah. We've already talked about that. It, the the post-production thing is, is probably the answer. So we've, as we kind of touched on before, we've, we've worked together before we did the short together, but this was the first time because I acted in that movie and I wasn't behind the camera in a, you know, in a writer producerial overseeing role, like it was with Wired Shut. So how yeah. was it working with me in that sense on Wired Shut? Were you nervous about it at all? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> no, I actually was incredibly, I felt incredibly, and I mean this genuinely, I promise. Oh, okay. I promise. Okay. Um, uh, I, I felt incredibly blessed. Thank you. Because, because you are um insane and, <laughs> and thank you thanks and no, well I, I shouldn't have led with that no uh you are very very regimented yes. and disciplined yes. and hold people accountable yes and hold me accountable and hold yourself accountable and and, and you're and you're incredibly good at getting shit done thank you can we swear in this Sure, I've I've said the f bomb twice, so I I hope so. <laughs> Fantastic. The um the I um uh try to be like that as much as possible, but maybe you know one you can't do it alone, and um uh it, it, you know you were you were you didn't let any aspect of you were in every aspect of the production whether you knew it or not, um, you know, even right now, you know, even though Martin and I were, I mean, you were my co-producer, even if Martin and I were setting up the shot and you were looking, go getting Natalie from the green room to do the thing. Yeah. Um, you made sure that the, that camera order was placed for the rental so that we had that gear. I mean, you, you, you made it happen. And, and, and I could not have done this without you. Thank you. Thank you. In other words, I'm scatterbrained. <laughs> well, the, it's the yin and the yang, right? I don't think you yin are. 
I don't think you are scatterbrained, but yes, it is true that I am very, very, you know, so like th- there needs to be someone like that in the partnership. So I fulfill that role. So thank you. I agree. I agree. <laughs> um, All right. Okay. Um, I've got some, I've got some beefy ones for you. Okay, here we go. I'm ready. Um, when writing for only three characters who shall we say, yes, have a couple of personal issues. <laughs> just a few. Just a few. Just a couple. Yeah. Yeah. What what's the approach for you uh for making them interesting mm. without completely compromising likability? <laughs> That's a really good question. Wow. Um well, uh, I would start by answering that by saying that I don't believe in the likability um, trope that is perpetuated sometimes in uh, the industry. Um, I think that characters don't necessarily need to be redeemable necessarily. The, it's better if they are in some way, but if they're not, they first and foremost, they need to be dimensional. They need to be interesting and they need to be good at what they do. Those are kind of the three things that make an interesting character in my opinion. Um, So approaching the three characters was a lot of fun because it was very different than anything I'd ever done because of the constraints that we had, the locations, the budget, the, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I kind of had to reverse engineer the story a little bit. Um, But the thing that I realized was that um, even though this is, you know, a thriller horror, right. You know, the home invasion element at, at the heart of it is, is, uh, a father daughter story trying to reconnect with one each other that's at the heart of the thematic core right and you know that's the nugget amidst the genre trappings and once I figured that out it building out the rest of it was actually easy you know I say that in air quotes but it was it was relatively easy um and in terms of the villain writing Preston um I I just had a ball writing him um he is everything that I've ever wanted to do in an antagonist Uh, I kind of just threw everything at the wall (laughs) with him (laughs) and um Betash was game and you know I was really delighted to have an actor bring such a heightened role with such gravitas and groundedness even though you know i mean he's you know he's he is a psychopath a sociopath he is but the yeah. way, the way betash portrayed him you, you couldn't help but be drawn to him and um so exploring that was really a lot of fun does, does that answer the question kind of yeah, yeah. It was that Max Cady element. Yeah. It was that Joker yeah. balance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I love the character you wrote for Preston. I love all the characters because they're all flawed, seriously. <laughs> and, and, but, no, go ahead. You know, well, I was going to say that, uh, and even pre- writing Preston, Preston, you, you, certainly get the sense that he's gone off the deep end mentally at a certain point in the movie. You certainly get the sense that he is vulnerable and volatile even before, like right when you meet him, you kind of have this like, I don't know about this guy. There's a a flicker that you can't. Yeah, there's kind of a sleeping dragon there. It's like, we got to tiptoe around this dude. Uh, And, and, um, but uh, there's there was this you know I can't speak for the audience but there was a scene uh, certainly in the script and certainly in behind the monitor and him performing it where I felt for him and understood you know he wasn't just he wasn't just a raving lunatic there was there was a truth and a, a, a an element of a reason why he had 
become this way, right? Exactly. He wasn't just completely, you know, hundred percent evil. You right. know. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I I'm with you there. Uh, that was a great answer. I'm re- I'm I like I like the breakdown of of uh, the three elements for writing characters. Uh, but but this whole likability likability thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh. It's, it's just I mean, it's you know I mean I I just I don't think super likable characters are that interesting because it's just it's not <laughs> truthful to who to humanity. Right. Yeah. No one person is all likable. No one person is all evil. You know, I mean, it, there's, I mean, that's the whole point of storytelling, right? Is to explore. I'm shaking the camera. The whole point of storytelling is, is exploring the murky grays of the human condition and, you know, yeah. those nuances. Um, and the, you know, I mean, yes, like you said, all three characters have a lot of issues, but it's, it's all, here, here's an answer. Here, here's an, an answer B to my answer A. Obviously, it's much more heightened than what would actually happen, but the core emotions that each of them feel, I have felt at some point in my life, in some variation. Mm. Obviously not as extreme, clearly, mm. <laughs> but mm. th- that helped me uh, root myself in them when I was writing them, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Basically, what Peter and I are saying is, is you can't make movies about nice people. <laughs> yeah, it's not interesting. Who cares? How did you go about deciding on the color palette for the movie? Because it's a very distinctive look that you and Martin created. So what were some of your influences when you were thinking about how to do it? Certainly when, it, you know, in terms of the color grading process, you know, I think I run against the grain on that. The 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 there are a lot of colorists who you know i'm not about using twenty thousand power windows to brighten someone's face up and and make the shot from red to pink because well it's better as pink um oh the the shot looks yellow here ah we wanted it should have been green let's just change it to green like i'm i guess what you would call a a pretentious a purist um (laughs) so you know when we my my process is we decide on a location we take the camera out of the box put the camera put the lens on point it down the hall and you know sure we you know what i will say is martin martin did bring up uh we we talked a lot about ozark uh martin that was martin's idea martin we really loved the idea of this icy cold yeah you know sanitized it looks uh, cool. yeah. palette um it it it's it, something that is so clean that it also almost is kind of under the surface dirty and grimy right. because of how clean it is right um but you know uh, yeah i i i don't yeah i i try not to i try to leave all that stuff at the door i, I mean i love watching movies and i love I mean, one of my biggest influences for this movie, I suppose, is Cape Fear. Right. And this movie looks nothing like Cape Fear, in my opinion. Um, it's, in, it's, inherently, it, it's inherently me, it's inherently you, it's inherently Martin. I mean, I shot a music video recently in a mansion um, and that, that looked all pretty white. But again, we weren't trying to make it super... I mean, the thing about, here's the thing, the other thing about, I try to be influenced by what, the elements of the script are mm. and pardon me one of the elements of the script was um it's up on a mountain yep. it's surrounded by snowy alpine um you know it, it's it's in the middle of nowhere and so how do you make someone feel cold when, how do I make the audience feel cold? And that informed the cat and mouse at the end of the movie yep. for strategic reasons in the eyes of the characters for survival, when they're running away from this, you know, maniac, they're not gonna, you know, Reed's not gonna go outside and book it into the forest. Right. Because Die. <laughs> he, he's gonna, I mean, who knows where the nearest city is? Yeah. Um, um, and the wind is howling and we hear wolves in the distance and coyotes. 
yeah. I mean, that was all part of the sound design. So, um, yeah, I, I, um, I guess my concise answer is, uh, is that I, I try to let the material influence what it should look like, not what I would like to emulate. I think that's oh. kind of lazy. If you, uh, I think it's lazy filmmaking if you go, well, only God Forgives was red and that was super cool. Should we shoot this red? Okay. Right. Yeah, but what the, what's the story? Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Very good answer. I should have talked faster. You, you're, you've quoted Mitch Album before. Youth, like pristine glass, absorbs the prints of its handlers. Mm -hmm. How does that notion bleed into your work? And what do you hope to challenge an audience with? Wow. Mm. I think whether we like it or not, as artists, creators, every single experience we have in our life, whether it be traumatic, happy, joyous, depressing, whatever, whatever you have you, um, it influences what we do, right? Like the quote says, um, I, what I sh hope to do with my writing is to make people look at the darkest part of parts of themselves and explore why they are that way and what made them that way and hopefully come to some sorts of psychological epiphany as to how they can address that going forward sometimes you know not that's not to say all of my stories end happily but sometimes that thing they realize is that I'm never going to escape who I am, right? But I think that's the point of storytelling in general, right? Is to make us look inward and explore the dichotomies of who we are. And I think that's, if I had to put it succinctly, that's what I would like my work to do. Very well said. Thank you. Thank you. Very well. Whew. Yeah. So wrapping up here, Alex, if you could go Oh back my God, you have one more? I do have one more. Yeah, I do. I do. You ready? Okay. You ready? Yeah, I'm okay. ready. If you could go back in time and give yourself one piece of advice before shooting Wired Shut, what would it be? One tidbit. To my former self. Correct. Before shooting. Correct. There's very, uh, there's a very little amount of time uh, nowadays because of audiences attention span um, having shrunken from what is now being put out versus what was being put out in the 1950s. Sure. And there is very, very little time for a director to get their point across without, be before losing them. And I would say, I would say to my formal, former self, try to be as concise as possible without compromising emotional impact. Because you've got, you mean, you've got an audience for two hours. So, yeah. and you want them to feel what you want them to feel. So you better, you better make your point and get the hell out of the way. Right. Doing music videos lately has been a really interesting exercise because you're trying to, it's almost like doing shorts, but even shorter. Because shorts, you can do 15 minutes and it can have dialogue. Music videos, sometimes with music videos, there's not even a story. Right. It's just you want to impart a certain feeling. Um, you know, uh, how, how does, and, and just support the song visually. 
um, and you have very limited time. You have four minutes and you can get a lot of footage. Uh, you, you can get a lot of footage in uh, an eight hour day um, yeah. and, and whittling it down to sort of a three and a half minute, four minute cut of a song, you know, that's a lot of footage you're throwing away. <laughs> so yeah. it's, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would say, I would say probably the best directors are the most concise, but without compromising um, emotional impact. Because if you are so concise, and that's the balancing act of it, and but 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 if you are so concise, I mean, if you're too concise, you're suddenly quantum of solace, and it's just like cut, 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 cut. Wait, what's going on? Oh, a car flipped over. I didn't even <laughs> see that happen because it was all motion blur. <laughs> I mean, you know. Um, so yeah, yeah. I uh, that's a really good question. What would you? Can I spin that back on you? What, yeah. what would you? What would you go? Uh, how same thing? What would you go back and do before uh, writing Wired Shut? What would you say to yourself? The thing I would say is that things will go wrong, and things will not go according to plan, and that's okay. Hmm. You can figure it out. Hmm. You have, you're equipped. You have a great partner. You have a good team. You have a good crew. Good actors you will be able to navigate what will feel like the worst thing in the world at the time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's probably the biggest thing that I would say in terms of like, in terms of, you know, like a writing storytelling standpoint, I would probably there's, I mean, there's by nature of the film, you know, the, the main character, he can't speak his jaws wired shut, hence the title there's not a lot of dialogue in the movie. There's, you know, there's like a few scenes when mostly when Preston comes in, frankly, um, and then, you know, Natalie's character too, but there's not a lot yeah. of dialogue. The, the thing that I've learned over the course of being, of writing a lot of scripts is that, you know, as much as I love dialogue and as much as I love people like Sorkin that are just like, you know, rapid fire bullets to a gun dialogue, oftentimes you don't need it in a film mm. um, that a moment a well written moment of silence mm. can be communicated by two actors that know what they're doing that mm. carries so much more emotional weight than a really really well written monologue in some cases yeah that that would probably be the thing that i would say too from a writing standpoint and to embrace that and to be okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. Peter, listen. Alex. I'm out, I'm out of bourbon. I still have a tiny bit. Did you pull more than I did or am I just... Well, the, this, <laughs> we're talking like David Lynch now. The, the, hello. The, 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 hello. The bourbon that hello. Matt gave me is, a, I think it's a hundred proof. So it's very strong. Ah, very, very strong. Yes. So I'm sipping it. I believe you. Well, I think that um, maybe wraps it up uh, yep. for the first. You think so? I think so. I, th I think this is a good ending to the first episode of Turtles Bourbon. <laughs> so, hey, Alan, um, you should tell them what to go watch now. Yeah. Um, uh, everyone who watched this uh, interview, um, thank you. And go check out Wired Shut on digital and VOD on November 30th. Do it.